communities need to create landmarks takes many different forms. While kings dream of palaces and temples, others express themselves in their favourite medium. Sometimes it's chocolate. Or in miniature, the representation of existing landmarks or infrastructure. Big people still remembering what it's like to be little people. So well-known monuments in miniature, such as the Statue of Liberty, are set amongst domestic foliage. But for many would-be architects, the first step is often a bucket, spade and sand. As you grow, so does the size. In Berlin, there's an annual sand sculpture festival. And some argue expressing your dreams in sand is better than concrete and glass. Es wird auch sonst so viel gebaut in Berlin in der letzten Zeit, wenn man sich umsieht. There is so much being built in Berlin recently, and when you look around, all these things, the new railway station, Potsdamer Platz, they have taken decades to build, but when they are finished, then they are there for all eternity. Whereas the sand sculptures need just over a week for their sculptures, and they are much nicer than the modern architecture. And six weeks later, they are sand again. So if you want to support the arts, I think you literally have to stick the money in the sand. Then you have to put this money in the sand. Sand is not unrelated to major construction materials. It's the basis of all concrete and glass. There are many different types of sand sculptures. There are many different types of sand sculptures. There are many different types of sand sculptures. The sand sculptures here were created by 38 artists from four continents. The winner was Indian artist Sudhasan Patnaik. He is a professional and runs a sand art institute at his home in Bengal. Really, I'm very happy to win this first prize because um, I couldn't expect to win this prize because last two years I am participating in this uh, international competition and last two years I am winning also public prize but this year this first prize is for me is a, is a like very big honor for me and for my country. But different cities, different dreams are here in downtown Manhattan, the city of skyscrapers. The quest was naturally to produce the biggest, this time in a different medium. Ladies and gentlemen, you are standing in front of the world's tallest chocolate sculpture, created by Alain Robin, which measures 20 feet 8 inches. And you give us a record, ladies and gentlemen. The chocolate addict could die happy attacking this monster. It took nearly 2,300 pounds to make. That's more than a thousand kilos of chocolate. It's pure dark chocolate, and the inside, all the support, all the structure that uh, makes this building strong is also chocolate. The elaborate piece took more than 30 hours to build and involved a lot of climbing and pouring. The sculpture would fit right in with the famous New York skyline, even though it's not an exact replica of any one structure. It's not really a real replica of any building. It's basically to create a tallest building. So that is a little bit of Rockefeller Center, a little bit of the Empire, and a little bit of uh, the, uh, the, the Chrysler building. So everything is a little bit mixed together. And my goal was to really reach the height. After such a monumental effort, one question remains. What's for dessert? 